one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Though he may overpower, though he may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Remember, Satan always fragments before he destroys. He always looks to divide. It's divide and conquer. So the second cornerstone to growth or change. If you're after change, you need information, but information alone is not enough. You need to be in relationships. You need people who can edify you. You need people who can encourage you. You need people who, by their walk, they challenge you. You need people who can speak the truth in love to you. But we're, we're all part of a body. And, and do, you, do you realize that, how do I want to say this? Do you realize that part of the reason why you limp when you hurt yourself is because there's a tenderness, because that part of the body is drawing energy and resources from the other parts of the body? So the second thing you need for growth or change is relationships. I say that because I'm amazed at, and I talked about this last week, at people who, you need relationships with people that you can do life on its deepest level. That was our definition of the church. If you're not doing life on its deepest level with somebody, in other words, talking about whether it's your lust problem, whether it's your marital problem, whether it's your frustration at work problem, whether it's your low self-esteem problem, whether it's your fear you won't get married problem. Well, you need people that you're doing life on its deepest level. We're pros at the superficial. Yes. But who are you doing life on its deepest level with? And hopefully it's those people that you're doing life on its deepest, deepest levels with, that they're putting eyeballs to your plights, to your circumstances, to your challenges. Even when you think about John 1, it says the word, the word was present and became flesh. And now what's the point? There should be a presence about relationships. All of us have relationships where there's an absence, where you're not sure the person's listening to you. <laughs> where they're half listening to you. But to really become all that God's called you to be, you need a community where people are present, where you're doing present, where people are, where you're doing life on its deepest level, where people are encouraging you, where people are edifying you, where people can speak the truth in love to you. If you're not in relationships, you're undermining your ability to grow and you're undermining your ability to change. Now, this is critical because Dennis is going to come up in about 10 minutes and share some of the things that we're going to be doing here. If we never taught enough, you don't need any more information from CBMI. You don't need, you are educated far beyond your level of obedience. I'm educated far beyond, I'm researched beyond my level of obedience, I'm studied beyond my level of obedience, my Bible is highlighted beyond my level of, if you never got any more information from here, you're good. Even if we haven't spoken to it directly, we've addressed it in principle. But if you're going to keep growing, see, you're after results, you're after change, you're after growth. If you're going to uh, accomplish that, you need the second cornerstone, which is the relationships that this room provides. You would be amazed. I've seen it modeled. You'd be amazed at how few safe people most people have in their lives. And you know the drill. I know that I probably could have said that a little more clearly, but you get my point. But you, you know the drill. Have you ever had a situation and you're like, oh, man, something's eating you up and it's just bugging you and you're like, man, I'm going to call hell. Oh, no, she got a big mouth. Huh? <laughs> no, I'm going to call Jean. Oh, no, she talked too much. I won't, even, I won't even be able to get a chance to share my problem. She's going to be talking about her kids. All right, I'm going to call. Uh, can't call Susie because, you know, all she wants to talk about is how big her baby's getting. 
And you, we've all been through that where it's like a mental list. You start, oh, uh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I'll just pray on it. <laughs> I'm going to go in my prayer closet. <laughs> That's another name for you can't trust nobody. You need relationships. And be open about it. I need you, you need me. Half some people, they just come in the room and hope someone notices that they need a pick me upper. <laughs> Sitting in your chair looking constipated ain't relationships. So the second cornerstone, I promise you, if you stay here, you will develop relationships. I have people in here who are like pure family to me. And they know that. And I've told them. And when someone becomes, because remember, you have, your, you have your family of origin, but then you have your spiritual family. And God gave you your spiritual family to provide you with what your family of origin may be incapable of giving you. So... Most people are just trying so hard and demanding my, my biological sister this and my absentee father this. And, and you need to disinvest from the need to get that from that person if they have no interest in giving, giving it to you. That's a word that you should always have underlined in your notes. Disinvest from the need to get something from somebody who has no interest in giving it to you. Whether it's respect, whether it's an apology, whether it's an explanation, disinvest from the need to get it. And then go to your spiritual family. You'd be amazed. God will place on me an unusual burden for people. And I, and I may not even know them that well. And I'll just start reaching out. That's purely God-ordained. If I can't reach out, I'll ask Dennis to reach out. I'll ask Ed May to reach out. Because you, want, you need people who are putting eyes on it. And I say this humbly, but we've had situations. I've given Ed May half a day off to go spend time with somebody. I've sent her to people's houses. She's volunteered to go to people's houses. She's proactively said to me, you know, I think, I think so-and-so could use. That, see, that's weeping with those who weep. That's rejoicing with those who are rejoicing. That's putting eyeballs on the plight of what somebody's experiencing. I can't tell you the number of times Ed may say, you know, Chris, I just feel that I, I feel the need. I think that's her way of saying, can I have some time off? I think they could use some quality time. They could use have being hugged on, loved on, encouraged. That's a cornerstone of change because the world won't offer you that. So cornerstone number two of change is relationships. Number one is information. Number two is relationships. Number three is experiences. Experiences. I have two definitions, two definitions of experiences or two ways that I want to highlight experiences. Experiences. When the Bible talks about experience, believe it or not, one of the synonyms in the Greek is proven character. So Romans 5 says, we glory in tribulation because tribulation work of patience. Patience, experience. Some of your Bibles say patience, proven character, and experience hope, and that hope won't make you ashamed. That's what Romans 5 tells us. Romans 5, 3 through 5. So look at the progression. We glory in tribulation because tribulation worketh patience. In other words, when you're going through things, it works out. How many of you have had an experience work out something that you didn't realize was in you? Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Sometimes it comes out of your mouth. <laughs> have you ever worked out something out of your mouth that you didn't know was in you or you thought it was dead or under the blood? Because tribulation worketh, employs patience. So we glory in tribulation because tribulation work of patience. Patience, and patience means the ability to remain the same. <coughs> so we glory in tribulation because tribulation worketh, and we have the right attitude, 
if we leverage the power of the Holy Spirit, if we walk in love, you can stay the same. You don't have to be an emotional yo-yo. You don't have to be up and down and up and down. You don't have to be a way to people approval. You can glory in tribulation because tribulation work of patience, the ability to stay the same. And then here's the key, patience, experience. Yes. 